guys, what's going on? Welcome back for a new video. I really hope that you all enjoyed my cover of Carry the Weight by We Came As Romans. In a moment, I'm gonna get you all learning the song, but just before I do, I have to leave a huge shout out to all of the names that are on the screen for you right now. These are the names of the awesome people who support me on Patreon, who really help to make videos like the one you're about to watch possible, especially these types of lesson videos. So thank you to all of my incredible patrons. So talking about Carry the Weight, a couple things you guys are gonna need to know. This track is in the time signature of 4-4 and at the tempo of 254 beats per minute. Now, you can put into your click track 127 or 254, it doesn't really matter. I use 254 and I know that a lot of you are probably gonna call me out on that and be like, well, technically it is 127. I guess, yeah, technically that's a better tempo suited for this track. I just use 254 because I like a lot of clicks in my ears and it's the easiest way to double the metronome and have twice as many clicks without assigning a different subdivision to be the accent or something like that. So that's why I use 254. Now, usually I say there's no tempo change, but that's actually not the case for this track. The choruses, there's two choruses in the song and both of them I had to push up from 254 beats per minute to 256. It's a very minor little change and most of you at home learning this track don't really need to know about it. The only reason why I'm including it, of course, is if you happen to also want to cover this and you need to drop it into a DAW and line things up, those are going to be the values that you can use to line this guy up inside of your own DAW at home. Now, why do we see a tempo change like that at all? It's really just so that we can elevate the chorus to like feel a little bit more driving. And then when you come out of the chorus, in almost both cases, it sort of drops out or comes to like a breakdown. So it needs to feel more halftime. That minor little tempo change just helps to create like more of a slower feel when you hit those sort of like halftime walls for the breakdowns. So that's the concept behind it. I see this a lot across all kinds of different metalcore tracks where we see like four BPM changes in the choruses or two to four BPM drops in like breakdown sections. It's just to make the halftime feel more halftime, more slower, hit harder kind of thing. That's all it's there for and uh, it's not the biggest deal. So with all that said, let's get into learning this song. I've broken the song up for you guys to learn into 13 individual sections. I'm gonna play each one of these sections first at the tempo you're gonna see it in the actual song. So either 254 or 256 beats per minute. Then I'm gonna slow it down to 160 beats per minute and go back through and play it a little bit slower for you so that you can pick up the parts that you maybe didn't get at the full speed of the song. The sections are just gonna be labeled basic concepts like verse, pre-chorus, chorus, post-chorus, post -chorus, verse two, stuff like that. Very simple, just eight to 16 bar groupings. And with all that covered, let's get into playing along together. So the first section in the song, I labeled the intro and there's no drums in it. So that section's learned, nice and easy. Now, the second section we're gonna go into in the song, the first section with drums is gonna be verse 1.1. Here's verse 1.1 played for you guys now. So coming out first 1.1, the only thing I'm gonna mention about that section is the little bit of tom work that I put into the track. I don't think that tom work's actually there in the original recording, so that's kind of optional. I just played it because I could hear something in the mix, but I couldn't really make out what it was, so I kind of did my best to just sort of improvise some little tom fills over top of the groove. I think more or less though, those tom placements are just replacing where kicks should be. It's no big deal though, you can kind of choose how to play it however you want. You can roll with what I did, or you can simplify it and just bring it back to kicks. And moving on, we're gonna come to the second half of verse one, so verse one, 1.2. I really enjoy this section. It's got a lot of cool little fills and grooves going on inside of it. Made for just a really fun playthrough. I did play the section in open hand. You don't have to play it in open hand. You can play it uh, sort of right over left if you feel more comfortable with that and you don't want to try it in open hand. But the reason why I did it in open hand is just because there is one quick part where I'm keeping time on the hi-hat and then I put four notes on the floor tom on my right, kind of like this sort of thing. And when I do that, I don't think that's actually what's going on in the recording. I think what's going on is he's putting like a right hand on bell and then uh, left hand on maybe floor tom or maybe there's no tom at all and it's just kick so you can kind of just play the bell there sort of go from hi-hat over to bell and just go kick 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 that's kind of like just a quick easy substitute for that fill so that you can play the whole section uh, close hand with right hand over left if you're more comfortable as I already mentioned so with all that being said let's check out verse 1.2 right now
Next section we're going to come to, I almost didn't include it as a demonstration. I guess I could have grouped it into the chorus, but it's just going to be a really, really small, I think it's like a two-bar section, just two really basic fills. And that section we're going to call pre-chorus one. So here it is real quick for you now. So coming off of pre-chorus one, a lot of you probably guessed it, we're gonna hit chorus one next. So the downbeat of chorus one, the very start where we hit the first cymbal and the first kick drum, that beat is going to be the tempo change. It's gonna jump from 254 up to 256. So this will be the first section. We have a little bit of an increase. For any of those of you at home trying to line this up in a DAW, that's gonna be where you're gonna need to make that tempo adjustment. The first half of the chorus, however, chorus 1.1, it's really simple overall. You guys shouldn't have too much trouble. I guess the only interesting part is there's some ghost notes in it over each sort of phrase. And after that, there's a really cool fill that takes us out. So the fill and the ghost notes are really the only things you really need to pay attention to. The kick placement kind of changes a little. It drops one note and then adds it for the second half of it. You'll probably pick it up. But with all that being said, let's get into chorus 1.1, perform now. Coming off of the first half of the chorus, we're gonna go into chorus 1.2. This next section is gonna stay at that 256 BPM. So we're gonna stay at that elevated tempo until the end of this section. Once we get to the end of it, then we're gonna drop back down to 254 beats per minute. So of course, because we have 1.1 and 1.2, I did break the chorus into two sections, and I really like the second section to play better than the first, just because it's a lot more interesting. There's some ghost note stuff going on, just more feel to the groove in it. I really enjoyed this section, and I really enjoyed the feel that's gonna take you out of it. So I hope you have fun learning it. Here we go with chorus 1.2, perform for you now. So coming off the chorus, the next section, the downbeat, the starting beat of the next section is gonna be your tempo change. So now we're going back down to 254 instead of 256. This next section we're gonna go into, I'm labeling verse 2.1. It really could be called post-chorus though. The reason why I guess I'm just rolling with 2.1 is because it's almost the exact same as verse 1.1. So to keep those guys like related to one another, I'm just gonna roll with the first half of verse two. And that kind of gives you a hint as to what you're gonna be doing in this section. It essentially is the first section that we played in the song, but the tom work is gonna be dropped and some of the symbol accents are going to be dropped. It's just a simplified version, so you kind of already know the pattern. You should pick up this section fairly quickly. Here we go with the first half of the second verse, verse 2.1, performed for you right now.
All right, so the next section we're gonna go into is gonna be the second half of the second verse, verse 2.2. There is a very brief two bar little dropout to introduce this section. And inside of that dropout, there's gonna be a little hi-hat fill. I really like this hi-hat fill. I thought it was just like a kind of cool, quick way to introduce the section. Once you get into the section, you're gonna notice there's not a whole lot going on here. It's kind of an easy, quick learn. You're gonna be able to manage all of the kick on just one foot, on just your right foot, and then you're gonna wanna leave your left foot on your hi-hat. You will be doing some hi-hat work throughout this section. And then the last thing I'll say about this section verse 2.2 is the, just the ending so we're gonna play this really basic fill going into the fourth phrase and then once you get into the fourth phrase you're gonna take the placement of the China and instead of playing it on downbeats you're gonna now play it on the ands this is a really simple concept but uh, if you haven't sort of messed around with that kind of placement before it may trip you up at first just take it slow pay close attention to my slower demonstration of it and you should have this section pretty quick uh, so here we go with verse 2.2 perform for you now So the next section following the second half of the second verse is going to be chorus two. So we're gonna go into chorus 2.1. I've broken this uh, chorus up into two sections again, and the two sections are very similar to the first two sections we saw in chorus one. Uh, just a couple slight changes, but nothing too crazy here. Now, the first thing I'll mention is there's a four bar dropout before the chorus, I guess you could call the second pre-chorus. Uh, we don't need to talk about it though, because it's just like, there's just a count in. I don't even think that's there in the original track. I just put my hands on China and hi-hat twice and then hit with the downbeat of the chorus. One thing that is important though is we're gonna see, just as we did with the first chorus, we're gonna see that tempo elevation. So you need to push your click up to 256 for this guy and for the second half of the chorus. Now talking specifically about the first half of the second chorus, the section we're about to take on, there's just a couple slight variations with the pattern itself. And then the fill that takes us out of this section is gonna be a new fill. It's a new concept to the track. That'll probably be the only part you really need to pay attention to with this section. The rest of it should come fairly quickly. So with all that being said, let's get into the performance of chorus 2.1. All right, so coming off of the first half of the second chorus, you guessed it, second half of the second chorus, so chorus 2.2. .2. This section's gonna be very similar to chorus 1.2. We're gonna see the same sort of ghost note pattern and some of the same cymbal placements. The cymbals that I choose are gonna be slightly different though, so just pay attention to that, nothing too crazy. The end of this section, however, is gonna be definitely different than the first time we saw this section. There's gonna be a fill that really, the intention of the fill in my mind is to slow down the feel of the song to get into the bridge, which is gonna be this really open dropout for the first half of the bridge until we get into the breakdown. So that's what's going on with that fill. It's kind of a cool concept too. It's really simple. It's just some like unison tom stuff and then a couple crashes and that'll take you out of the section. So with all that being said, let's check it out. Here's chorus 2.2 performed for you now.
So we've slowed the feel of the track down and we actually slowed the tempo down as well. You're gonna need to reduce now your click back to 254 on the downbeat of the start of the bridge. That's just the crash at the end of that fill that we just played coming out of the second half of the second chorus. Now that we're in the first half of the bridge, well, we're gonna skip over it because there's not really much to talk about here. You're just gonna keep time on your hi-hat in China with cymbal accents throughout it and then there's a choke before the breakdown, but nothing that we really need to demonstrate. You all, I'm sure, can just pick it up by ear fairly quickly. Moving along, that takes us into the second half of the bridge, which is going to be a breakdown and uh, this breakdown is really cool it's a new pattern for the track i really enjoyed it the pattern is very important because we're going to see this pattern in every section going forward it's just going to be a variation on this pattern so uh, once you pick this up make sure you know it because we're going to see it a lot until the track is done with that being said let's take a look at the breakdown and the bridge right now So after that breakdown section, we're gonna move into what I've labeled the bridge verse. I don't know, I just call it that just because like the vocal pattern is gonna be the same as the first section in the bridge, which was that dropout that we were keeping time for. So that's why I call it that. It's really just kind of like a sped up or just feels faster. Feels like you take the breakdown and you start moving with it. Even though the pattern is very similar, it just feels like you start moving because of the, uh, the cymbal placement going to a crash. You're gonna add some more kicks. And the center line of this section is really cool. There's a really sick fill. I really liked it. It kind of starts on one and then ends on three and comes back in. So I hope you all enjoy learning that fill. If you want that fill broken down an episode of what the fill, make sure to comment down below and uh, maybe we can talk about that in the future. If some of you get tripped up by the fill, we can definitely take a look at it in detail in that series. With all that said, let's dive into the demonstration. We're taking a look at the bridge verse now. So now we're gonna go into the second last section in the song. I'm calling this outro 1.1. So I've taken what is the outro pattern and I've broken it into two sections, 1.1 and 1.2. The reason why I did that, we're gonna talk about more in a sec, but really the reason is just because this song has a fade out and I wanted to continue the pattern to where it was supposed to resolve if the track kept going. That's just because like for me, performing the song here as a cover for you guys, I don't necessarily just wanna fade out my drums and fade out the camera, so I, I wanna pick it, like a stopping point in the pattern and play all the way through even though the song drops off. So that's why there's so much of this outro. Now for the outro, the pattern is uh, very similar to the breakdown. As I mentioned, once we learn the breakdown pattern, we're gonna be sort of just using variations of it all the way to the end of the song here. Uh, we're gonna be keeping time on the bell with downbeat accents on the hi-hat and outside of that, pretty straightforward section considering that the footwork is very similar to what we've been doing for these last couple sections. So let's take a look at the first half of the outro, outro 1.1 performed for you now.
So congratulations, you've made it. You've got one more section to learn. It's a very simple section, and then you've got this entire song learned. Uh, let's get into it. So that section is gonna be outro 1.2. It's basically what you just learned. The only reason why I split it up is just to give you an easier time learning the end of this, because there's a new fill there. It's super simple, and I just sort of put it in really quick just to like conclude the song. So outside of that, that's pretty much it. It's almost what you just played, just a little bit of a variation at the end. Here's outro 1.2 performed for you now. Congratulations on learning the song Carry the Weight by We Came As Romans. I hope you enjoyed playing that as much as I did. I thought this was just a really fantastic, like sort of simple, just fun driving metalcore track. I hope you all enjoyed learning it on the drums. All of the names on the screen for you right now are the names of the awesome people who support me on Patreon. So thank you to Taylor Bradford and the rest of my patrons for supporting me to make content like this really possible, especially these lesson videos. If you did enjoy this video and you want to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon link and my merch link in the description below. You can join my Discord server for as low is five bucks a month and come hang out with me on voice as well as the rest of the amazing community we have there. In closing, you can connect with me further on my social media pages. Those are always in the description below as well as on the screen for you right now. Thanks so much for checking out this video and I will see you guys all very soon with something new.